find the biggest blunder. Okay. So again, this is more simplified version of Einstein equation. So the left side is the uh, cur uh, space, space curvature. So how much space is curved. And then right side, if this is an energy tensor, energy tensor is sum of all the energy including mass and the momentum. But basically, let's call it the mass. And then, so the Einstein equation, this Einstein equation tell uh, mass is going to tell space how to curve, and then space is going to tell uh, matter how to move. So, okay, I wrote down here. Matter tells space how to curve, space tells matter how to move. So, that's Einstein equation. But I can make this a uh, more simplified version. So this is easy, right? Mm -hmm. This matter. matter tells how space how to go, and then space tells matter how to move. So this why this is why these two are equal. That's Einstein equation. Okay. Then when Einstein came with this Einstein equation and applied this Einstein equation to the universe, Einstein noticed that universe can be, you know, cannot be static. Mm. At that time, so now Einstein came with this general relativity and Einstein equation in 1915. At that time, people still believed the universe is static. Static, I mean, it's not expanding or it's not contracting. But if you look at this Einstein equation, the matter mostly is causing gravity, right? Gravity is a, a force to pull each other, pulling force. So, if you apply this equation to the whole universe, the matter in the universe can pull down the universe and then make it shrink. I think, I look at this equation and I notice that. And then he thought this is wrong. Because at the time, people believed that the uh, universe is static, the universe is stable. So, that's why Einstein added something here called cosmological con constant to make universe static. So gravity is going to put in force, so Einstein added something to cancel it out, something uh, uh, positive to cancel it out. So this cosmological constant is something repulsing force, and then to make universe static, not expanding or collapsing. So now then Einstein is happy. Now with this cosmological constant, this equation can, the universe in this equation is static. So he was happy. But later, in 1929, uh, Edwin Hubble discovered expansion of the universe. Uh, so he again used some kind of stars to measure distances to galaxies. And he found, so these one point, each point are galaxies, and then galaxies are moving away from us, and then more distant galaxies, here is the distance from us, more distant galaxies are moving faster away from, away from us faster. More distant galaxies are faster. So this is called something called, we call Hubble's law. And then this is the evidence that the universe is expanding. Because how you explain this? More distant galaxies are uh, moving away from faster. Uh, by the way, this is the Mount Wilson's 100 inch telescope that Hubble used. It's kind of big, 100 inch. So it's like uh, 2.5 meters, right? So this is 2.5 meters. And uh, this is Edwin Hubble. So the natural interpretation of this Hubble diagram law is this, right? Universe is expanding, so all other galaxies are moving away from us. And then that's why more distant galaxies are moving away from us faster. See? Each part of the so this is like an example of balloon. Each part of each part of the universe is expanding. So for example, this galaxy is expanding, right? Moving away, right? And then this part is also expanding, this one is moving away. So if I look from here, this galaxy, this galaxy is 
moving away twice as fast as this galaxy because the distance is twice as big. Does it make sense? Okay. So that's why more distant galaxies are moving away from aspect. So that's how you <coughs> get this kind of relation. Velocity, uh, velocity and distance. So, this is a discovery of the expansion of the universe. And then Einstein was so happy to hear about this. Because in Einstein equation, universe it can you know expand. Right? Because the universe can change size without this. So Einstein actually heard from Hubble, then he removed this cosmological constant, cosmological constant, and then put it back to the original beautiful shape of the Einstein equation. Einstein <coughs> actually didn't like to put cosmological constant because that's something artificial, right? The other part of the Einstein equation naturally came from theory, came from theory, his theory. But this is something artificial that he put it later. So he didn't like this part. So he was happy to move, remove this part here in Hubble's discovery of the expansion of the universe. So now, Einstein's equation is original shape where the universe can expand, right? And then Hubble, uh, Einstein really liked the Hubble discovery, so he called Hubble and he later actually visited the Mount uh, Wilson Observatory to shake hands with Hubble. So this is Einstein looking at the 100-inch uh, telescope and Edwin Hubble is here. So then when Einstein removed this cosmological constant, he called it my biggest blunder. Blunder is something like a mistake to put it in. But the story does not end here. In 1998, uh, eight, people measured the uh, distance to more distant galaxies using so something called supernova. So this is an example of supernova. See, this is explosion of one star, but it's as bright as the entire galaxy. This is one star. This is 100 billion stars, but this one is almost as bright as the galaxy. Right? And then this type of supernova, so type 1 and supernova, we sort of know intrinsic brightness. So this is again the same game as, as variable stars. If we know the intrinsic brightness by measuring apparent brightness, then we can measure distance. This is an example. We call it the standard candle because if it's brighter, that means it's closer, right? If supernova is fainter, that means it's far away. This way, we can measure the distance. Okay. And then this time, much, much farther, uh, more distant galaxies than Hubble measure the distances. Our result is here. Here. So this is a similar diagram. Again, this time against redshift and then our brightness. And then what these three people found is very distant supernova are actually fainter than expected. Fainter. A little bit, see, only you know several magnitude here, maybe one magnitude or less. But why is it fainter? Because universes accelerating. The expansion of the universe is accelerating. That's why the distant one is fainter. So here acceleration is a key point. The universe is not just expanding, but it's speeding up. The expansion of the universe is getting faster and faster and faster. Okay. So this is what those three gentlemen discovered in 1998 paper. And then they received the Nobel Prize by discovering acceleration, late in the expansion of the universe, in 2011 Nobel Physics Prize. So, if we, I go back to the Einstein equation. So, actually, I, this Einstein equation needed cosmological constant, but needed much larger than original Einstein's value. This time, not to stop the, the collapse of the universe, but to make it, make expansion accelerate. 
So we needed the bigger value of cosmological constant to make the universe um, expand in accelerating. So actually, Einstein's biggest blunder that he that's what he called and he took out this cosmological constant was actually the our uh, blunder. We actually need this, right? We shouldn't take it away, we needed this. So that's an interesting story and that's I think tell us how great Einstein was one of the episodes. And then right now Sometimes we call cosmological constant as dark energy. That's something pushing the expansion of the universe. And a lot of researchers in the world, including myself, are trying to pursue what is this cosmological constant and dark energy. We still don't, don't understand what is this cosmological constant dark energy. That's the biggest challenge for, for our scientists.